PSD with you, tutorials and gaming. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, this is the Project Trident website uh, homepage. It gives you uh, notifications of all the available releases. What we want to do is we'll go to Downloads. Sometimes the website's not the quick as it could be. Um, the download speed was fine. But the website itself can be a little bit um, on the slow side. Right, as you can see, it says told you the latest release, highlighted in the, the blue background and the white text. There's a quick rundown of the system requirements. They're quite modest, uh, really. They're nothing too heavy. Uh, it gives you a list of known issues, uh, general release notes. And obviously, you're going to need to click on this in order to get the uh, download going. There's a checksums if you want to check it. Some archived ASO versions. Um, yep, so if you click on this, it'll start the download process. And as you can see, the actual download speed is, is pretty decent. Um, we're getting, yeah, you know, to 24.7. That's not too bad. It's quite speedy. From a 3 gigabyte. ISO. So the ISO is not the not it. I don't know. Is that? I suppose the ISO is middling size. It's not not the smallest, but not the largest I've seen. And and yeah, it's downloaded in just about a minute, which is not too bad. Right, we're going to install Project Trident. Nothing much has changed, really, in all the previous installs. It's obviously got the. The various boot options, as you can see, as as you do on GhostBSD and FreeBSD, etc., etc. It's it, like I say, it's a common thread on on the BSDs. You get boot options, kernel, reboot, escape to loader prompt, boot single user and multi user, which is the default anyway. If you just like countdown, it will it will automatically select that. Or if you want to preempt the countdown, then you just press enter. One thing about Trident and BSDs in general is that really. The install process really is not unchanging. It's you could go from a very much earlier version, and and you'll go through exactly the same steps. There might be one or two different design choices, and still using OpenRC, uh, which is good. But basically, the design, the um, the boot process is the same. This is the install screen. For some people, it may look complicated, but it's it's not that difficult. The system information here, which will give you a quick summary of uh, what you're installing it on. There's your keyboard, because you can change the layout. Uh, they haven't got a Sun keyboard, which is annoying, because that's the one I use. I use a Type 7, but never mind. Let's go down to English. And, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Interesting Polish, British keyboard. And we've got a locale. I'm going to change that to British English. So it's the same as it always has been really on this. Uh, change the name. Very original and I know. There's the date, if you need to alter that. And UTC, well we're going to change it to uh, Europe London. Always, every time I do it, it always scrolls up and then loses focus. Interesting. So Europe, London. We can select it. And that's practically everything, I think, yes. And the next. Okay, because we're doing a VM, we're just gonna use one drive. Um, we're gonna use all the drive. It's not a massive, it's only 30 gigabytes allocated. We'll just go with. Uh, I, I always like to put a swap in it. Keep it at that size, yeah. Okay, next, I think. Next. This is drive potential. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Right, these are the ones which uh, will be installed when you first start the system. I kind of like this. This is a, a neat little thing. 
Um, gives you a system that you can be up and running straight away. All looks good. Obviously, uh, if you're in, yeah, that's a virtual box guest editions. If you were installing on the real hardware using NVIDIA, then of course it would select it. And again, for AMD, it would select that if you were installing, if you had a card in there. Uh, X Fat, I always like to put that just in case. And the USB sticks like to be in it. Open uh, PP, and that's good. I think that's it. Okie doke. And I think that's everything we selected. Okay, next. And here comes the, uh, the, the various user details. Need a root password or the admin password. It can be anything you course, as long as you remember what it is, otherwise you won't be able to perform any uh, system related admin tasks. Now we need a normal user account. Yeah, the same. We've done it. I've done it many times. I've shown you many times in here. The default shell is ZSH, but I prefer... I'll put Bash. It's not my most favourite. I prefer the straight SH, but Bash will do this time. And that's just a brief summary of what we've just done. And I think that is... Yeah. Okie doke. And here we begin. And that's it, really. That's nothing majorly difficult about it it's uh, fairly straightforward it may look a bit unusual if you're not used to it it's perhaps not the most so again you so see you're getting into the the sort of like visual aspects it's not the most polished but it's very functional and i do like it because of that it's simple it gets on with it and uh, i give them 10 out of 10 for that and that's it so i will fast forward this and we'll just get straight into the into the desktop. This is not going to be a, a long review. It's There's not much change, nothing spectacularly different. I just wanted to get a video out showing you uh, that the new release is, is just basically out. Anyway, we'll fast forward to the um, to the end of the installation. And that's it, it's finished. I'll just quickly reboot. I just want to show you something interesting when it actually reboots. Now we just reboot, and have you noticed the, the actual text, the trident and the uh, what looks like the Christmas tree, I know it's not Christmas tree, but it looks like one, is now blue instead of white. And that tells you that you're working on a installed system rather than the live DVD, which I think is a nice little touch. I like that. It's only a little thing, but I like that. So we're starting up. Um, it's not too bad. It's not, it's, not the, uh, it's not the slowest boot up, especially for a a BSD system, probably due to the open RC. Well, we'll just uh, put password in and then we'll get to the desktop. Everything looks as, as normal as it always does. Right, the resolution is a little bit large, so I will scale it down a little bit uh, just so we can get a full a full view of what's going on. Right, so we're on the desktop of Project Trident 19.06. And this really is a point release. Uh, the last one I looked at was the, the release of 19.04, uh, I didn't do 05. And I tend to not really do uh, point releases, mainly because not much is going to change. Um, perhaps with the exception of um, Nomad BSD, which, you know, to their credit, they do huge changes between each point release. But in terms of uh, FreeBSD and uh, GhostBSD and also now project trident the point releases are really just bug fixes changes in uh, repositories labeling uh, updates to file systems it's stuff like that maintenance and incremental updates um, i think really the only benefit of, of 
reviewing a system is if there's been major changes. But in this in this instance, I'll make an exception. Um, there's not much changed. Uh, the default applications on the desktop uh, are probably the same. The menu items. Uh, it, it, if, if you like, if you like Lumina, then uh, everything is the same. And if you don't like Lumina, then nothing will have changed. But Lumina is Lumina. Um, so we browse applications. The one that already comes with is uh, the development. You get a Qt5 Assistant Lumina Text Editor. Uh, graphics, you get Lumina PDF, the basic things really, screenshot utility and Photonic. Oh, sorry, Phototonic. And you get Lumina Media Player, Pandora Internet Radio, VLC. Office, you get Calculator. There's no Office Suite uh, by default, which is unusual. I think uh, one recommendation would be to, to put in an Office Suite at least. Um, I can see this being a workstation operating system, very much so. I really need a... Um, yeah, I think you'd need an Office Suite in there. Just put Open Office or LibreOffice if you wish. Uh, the settings, uh, the abundance of which uh, are always the same. The system utilities. And utilities at the bottom. There's a few true OS uh, applications ported over, of course. Let's have a look at the um, this type of version information. Again, just like the video I did when uh, showing you to install Lumina 1.5.0, uh, Lumina here is also at the same level. I think to a certain extent it does run a, a little bit smoother on uh, Trident and true OS than it does FreeBSD, only slightly. It's only very subtle. It's a, a subjective measurement, of course, um, but it just feels a little bit more integrated, which which would make sense because it really was designed for true OS in the first place. The implementation is a little bit smoother in this case. Um, you got Falcon as the default web browser, no Firefox. Uh, I don't mind Falcon. Falcon is um, it's fairly lightweight. It runs really smoothly. I have got no complaints about Falcon. Or Falcon, if you want to get it, but it's Falcon. And uh, the updates, let's have a look. Check. Oh, last check. Yeah, it's um, a good rollback thing. If anything goes wrong with your system after updating, is actually it takes a snapshot of when you first install. And then you can roll back if it um, making the errors, which is a good little touch. I like that. So yeah, there's really not much, uh, not much I can add to this mini review or this this quick look that I haven't already said in previous reviews on uh, Project Trident. It's just really you know a, a few, uh, but I just wanted to uh, put a video out there and show uh, that they're very much still developing this. And I don't think it'll be long before the release of the next one, which will be, I, well, I presume it'll be 1910 or 1912. I mean, of course, you could get 197, 198, etc., etc. But I don't think it'll belong to the next one. Everything is just really as it was. The uh, memory usage hasn't changed. I mean, it's using the ZFS is running anyway. Um, but, I mean, it's 127 megabytes active. I mean, that's um, that's very lightweight anyway for a, a, a smooth desktop like this. Installing packages uh, is the same as it was, and I will show this by installing Linus, and we'll do a quick Linus test anyway. Right, what well, we'll search for Linus. And there it is. So we'll just select that and if you want to install, then yep. And let it do its thing. I think it's already done. Don't take two minutes to install it. Again, if you're used to a visual package manager like Synaptic on Linux, then this won't be uh, won't feel too strange for you. Yeah, I'm just having a look to make sure it's installed, it is. Right, very good. And we'll just exit out of this. 
the terminal, and of course, then we put Linus. Well, first, we're going to root, but we'll type Linus, and we'll audit the system. And we'll just let it do its thing. That was quick. And we've got a score of 73, which is quite respectable. Not too bad at all. Uh, I think it's certainly higher than the, the base install of FreeBSD. Not bad. I'm, I'll be quite pleased with that. As I say, the package management system is the same as it was. Um, it's fairly it's intuitive and it's nice and smooth. It gets the job done, as I saw when I installed this. So, yeah, very good. I normally only do that for a full review, but for this case, I'll make an exception. So that's the quick look, really. I know I do apologize if there's nothing much uh, really to report. Um, I'll leave a link to the Project Trident homepage, the um, package change notification and uh, updates, etc. So you can have a look yourself. Uh, there's quite a few updated packages since 1905. I'm just looking now and it actually says uh, the 2,739 updated packages, which is quite a lot. So yeah, it's another competent release. It's slowly climbing up there. I think it's uh, it's got, I think it's got plenty of scope in it. I do wish that they'd put a, an office uh, suite there, but that's just a little gripe uh, that I've got. But apart from that, it's business as usual. And like I say, if you watch one of my earlier videos on reviewing Trident, everything I said then applies now, and nothing's really changed. So thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out, please consider subscribing, as this really helps me help you.